So the first sensor we have here is an ultrasonic sensor. Now this is a pretty, pretty good one. Um, it, it measures the distance pretty accurately. I think it, it kind of uh, gets inaccurate after like, um, I don't know, maybe a yard or something like that. But it does, it does a pretty good job, pretty precise uh, measurement there. So honestly, that, that could be S tier. I'm trying to think of what use cases it's been used for. Um, obviously, like, you know, just a basic, like, ruler type of setup. Um, but yeah, I think, or like a tripwire or something, if you wanted to detect someone passing through, anything like that, honestly, it does a, a pretty good job there. Um, and, and some of these sensors, like, you have to wait in between, like, polling them. So you have to wait, like, you know, a second before you can ask them the distance again but this one's this one's pretty fast so you can get a pretty fast consistent um output on that so yeah i would say i would say it's a it's an s tier sensor here um pir motion sensor now this one i don't know it's it's definitely very popular right you get a lot of people showing off this one obviously you know it can detect movement um or you know people animals that type of thing but honestly it's not it's not, it doesn't have a whole lot of use cases because like, I mean, what are you going to do if you detect movement? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't give you very much information to go off of. I think I'm going to have to put it B tier, honestly, because like, yeah, there's, there's not a, as much you can do with it as some of these other sensors. Um, yeah, exactly. I think, I think B tier is a solid, solid place to put it. Um, RFID. Now these ones, these ones are really cool. Um, yeah, you can have the different cards or tags here, which it, it shows here, and you can uh, have, like, they each have a unique ID, so you can have, like, millions or maybe it's even, like, billions of different cards, and it can identify each one. So that's definitely, that's a cool one for, and it's just very, like, I mean, when you think of, like, a modern security system, that's what you think of, you know, tapping a card or a phone or something like that, and I think, I think that's definitely a cool thing to be able to do with Arduino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like what use cases, you know, you would we would actually end up using them for on the channel, but definitely they they definitely have a lot of use cases out there in the real world. Um and yeah, they're definitely cool to just play around with. Okay, next we have a, this touch sensor. Now this is um I did I actually did a video on capacitive touch sensors a couple of days ago and they have some cool properties, but this one in particular doesn't look very useful so like it's not so it's basically just going to detect if uh, your finger or even some other conductors like come into play with it whether it's contact or some of them are even sensitive enough like they can detect it if you're just nearby like you don't actually have to touch it which is kind of cool but uh yeah this one in particular i don't i don't think there's a lot of use cases for i think the best use case for like capacitive touch type of things is when you have something that's already metal and then you can just have that be touched and then read input from that. It's like one of those, you know, bedside lamps um, where you like touch it and it turns on like that's a cool use case for that because you just, you know, you just touch it and it does something. Having like this extra PCB, like it might as well be a button, honestly. I think it's I think it's C tier. Um, I, I might put a B just because like the the idea of the capacitive touch sensing thing is really cool. I mean, it's the same technology used in phone screens and whatnot, but this this implementation is is not great. Um, a water sensor. Now, this is actually, I mean, this is kind of a similar idea. I think basically it sends out on some of these, like there's a bunch of little metal strips here, and I think on some of them it'll send out electricity, and on the others it'll read. So obviously if there's water, then electricity will pass through from some of the strips to the other strips and you'll know um i think it might even have like a, a height i'm not sure it might even have like a height aspect where it can detect like how high the water is based on how easily the electricity is flowing because obviously if it's at the top the electricity would flow more easily um yeah i definitely think yeah this this one is is good the touch sensor is, is good at what it does but it's not it's not as versatile um let me check one setting here right quick. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so I just wanted to check the, there's like a setting where you can change like how much latency there is, which affects like how fast the chat messages come from you to me or whatever. So I just wanted to check and make sure we're on low latency mode so I can see them as soon as possible. Um, 
so the water sensor yeah i think it's i think it's it, it yeah it falls into that same boat of of good at what it does but it's not that versatile so honestly probably also also b tier i think um yeah so there's not a whole lot of use cases for it i guess like we have another one uh this soil moisture sensor here which is um much more interesting i guess like it's it's again it's kind of like a cross between this water sensor and this touch sensor it does like a much better job calculating how much moisture there is in the soil which i feel like is the main kind of use case that you'd use this water sensor for i don't know i think it's yeah i got a much much better potential there because like that's that's what i think of when i think of the water sensor i think of like sticking it in a pot and then using that to tell you if you need to water it or something um that way you can touch grass even from you know within your house which is always nice um so then we have uh next up we have the light sensor um and this is i don't know why there's this whole pcb attached to it like you can just use one of these light dependent resistors without all of that extra stuff there um but i think it's i think it's pretty honestly it's it's quite good i don't know a or s here but like it yeah if you want to be able to sense how much light there is you know a light dependent resistor does a, a really nice job of that i might put it s tier um for like a night light or anything like that i mean you basically you'll you'll always see this little guy this little light dependent resistor right there and uh yeah i think it does a nice job there hasn't been much innovation there in a while i would say but that's i guess just because it does does such a good job um ooh, this next one here is probably the most complex one on the list here the this is um like a gyroscope and accelerometer so it can detect like how it's moving and how it's rotating and it does it uh pretty precisely i would say um so yeah like you can tell the movement so for uh an upcoming lightsaber project i'm using one of these or or similar to detect the you know movement and rotation so you can tell how like if if for example if you're if you're hitting against something suddenly then obviously it's going to be moving and then stop moving or start moving in the other direction if it reflects off so it's it's definitely very cool for that and also you can do like slower more precise things like if you you know were to put one on your hand then you might be able to detect some some gestures like that so i think yeah honestly this could be s tier one thing i will say that might yeah they are really cool one thing i will say that might tempt me to put it a tier is they can be really finicky um just getting them i don't know sorted out just because I don't know. I don't know exactly how they work. I think it's like a, uh, like there's like a little like ball that is dr sort of dragged behind with the momentum. It's, it's hard to explain. You have to look up a visualization really, but yeah, they, they can be kind of finicky. So that's my main complaint against them. But honestly for, yeah, for the, how cool, like the features you can pull off with them are really cool. So I think, I think they're going to have to be S tier. Um, this next one is like, I think it like senses different like gases and stuff. So like if you wanted to make a carbon monoxide alarm or something with Arduino, you could do that with this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's a pretty specialized use case and I haven't actually used one of these. Hello. I haven't actually used one of these, but I don't know. I, th I feel like, I don't know, assuming it's good at what it does, it could be A or B tier pretty specialized. I might have to put it in B tier because that's kind of what we're doing with the more specialized ones that don't have as many use cases. Um, so yeah, I think, I think B tier is probably a fair, fair place to put it. Um, next we have an IR receiver. So this one, yeah, these, these are definitely also cool. Um, basically, you know, just TV remote technology. The TV remote has a little IR LED on the end that sends out light signals and this thing, you know, can pick them up and obviously the Arduino can translate them into other, uh, into like actual commands and then do something with them. So yeah, yeah. Making your own carbon monoxide detector. I don't know if I would trust that in my own home. I feel like I would rather have, you know, a, a certified off the shelf smoke detector <laughs> rather than relying on, you know, some patchy Arduino project. Like, yeah, that that's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, Yes, yeah, so the IR LED honestly it could be S tier. Like it has maybe maybe A tier. Like it has pretty broad um pretty broad applications, I would say. And 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. It it's good at its job. It's good at its job. Again, it can be a little finicky. You'll notice like it has this metal cage around it. Some of them are literally just like the dark, um, a bit like little LED bulb. It has the metal cage around it to try to prevent light from coming in from other sides. But one thing that you will notice is sometimes other lights, even not uh, infrared lights, other lights can just interfere with those signals and make it harder for that to figure out what the actual signals that are coming in are. So um yeah but so i think i think a tier is fair um i i may slightly be putting it there because we have four on s and four on b which might slightly tempt me to you know try to even them out but you know that's that's not that's not been proven yet so let's you know let's hold our horses um next up we have this subscribe button which looks pretty terrible because it's just the middle few letters here but Obviously, we've got to put that in S tier, um, and if anyone here hasn't subscribed, you should, I mean, if you want to be an S tier person, you've, you've got to do it. So just just check that box right now, and we'll we'll carry on. Um, this next one here is a temperature and humidity sensor. So um, yeah, I think these are these are pretty pretty good. Um, it yeah, it's basically like if you know you, those like shiny light billboards you see when you go by a bank or whatever where they always have the time and the temperature and humidity like i mean you can make that with this little guy right here and you know whatever that screen is um yeah it does it does a good job with the uh temperature and humidity one thing about it is it can't detect i mean i don't know if you would ever need this but it can't detect very rapid changes it only like can report to you like i think it's like once every second or something like that otherwise it gets bad results but um yeah it provided you don't need to know the temperature more than once every second updated uh it should be it should be pretty good to go this next one here is uh you can see there's like a little microphone on the end there so it's just a sound sensor i think it's just gonna have um like one a one pin output for like an analog output for how loud it is so obviously you know loud would be all the way at the top and not very loud would be all the way at the bottom and then you can see it has like a little trim potentiometer here that you could adjust that with presumably but honestly like it's not super useful because like you're taking a microphone which obviously detects not just how loud it is but like all of the sound which you could record and instead you're just getting out how loud it is which I you know there are some use cases for like uh, maybe a clap to turn on clap to turn off type of thing could be could be good with that but honestly it's not I feel like it's it's very li it's limiting the functionality of a microphone quite a lot. So I, I think I'm in a C tier, honestly. Um, this one here doesn't look like much. I think it's supposed to be like a clock module, um, which obviously is is pretty cool. I would say um, being able to keep because this this slot here is for a battery, so you can put in an extra like coin cell battery, uh, just like a watch, and that way, if your Arduino does lose power, like just maybe a power flicker or something like that then when it comes back on, it'll reconnect with the clock module. The clock module will have kept the perfect time, so you won't lose time. Like if you're having an alarm at 9 a.m. every day, you'll still have that alarm go off at 9 a.m. every day, whereas if you didn't have the clock module, your Arduino turns off, turns back on, suddenly your Arduino thinks it's whatever the default time that the program starts at is, and then it's a whole mess. So definitely uh, a lot of use cases for this. So I think I'm going to put an A tier. Um, a thermistor module so that's this is kind of like a, a dumber temperature sensor it's like we have this temperature and humidity sensor up here but then imagine if it was like that except kind of like the light dependent resistor so this little well it's cut off but it, it's just like a little black dot and it basically just gives you an analog value for how I guess how hot it is I think so a higher value would mean that it's hotter so not not nearly as useful honestly could be c tier obviously it's much cheaper than um this more complicated temperature and humidity module but uh definitely more limited use cases i don't know what kind of scenario you would need that kind of very limited um temperature information about maybe there's there's some i can't think of any off the top of my head um this next one here is really cool though i haven't gotten to test out one of these but this is a color sensor so basically You've got these four white LEDs at the corners and they shine up and then this little one in the this little thing in the middle like reads how much red and green and blue there is in you know whatever is right above it shined on by these lights. 
Um, I think that'd be a really cool one to test. So I, I can't put it S tier because I don't know if it actually works really well. But if it does, it would definitely, I feel like that would definitely be an S tier thing. And the, the idea of it is really cool. So I'm, I'm going to A tier it until I get a chance to test it. And then we have our last sensor is a barometer. I don't know why I just went in F tier. I don't know. Um, so for testing air pressure, I guess. I don't know what Arduino projects you would need to test air pressure for. Maybe <laughs> if you were, you know how those, those little like brownie box recipes always say, if you're above this altitude or air pressure, you have to you have to do this different cooking time. Maybe if you wanted to just check for sure that you're not at a certain altitude and air pressure, you could use one of these. But that that seems like a kind of kind of limited use case, if I'm being honest. So yeah, so I'm I, it could be it could be B or C, honestly. I think I'm gonna put it C. So you know the 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 tiers aren't quite even, but we have this nice this nice stair step here. None of the sensors made it in F tier, which is which is good. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's the tier list for Arduino sensors.